In this lecture, we'll be learning about coupled field analysis using a very th simple example. So from solid mechanics, we have been introduced to the concept of a bar, something like this with a force applied to one end of it, say F. And through a structural analysis, we get and, and Hooke's equation, uh, we get sigma, which is stress, equals E, Young's modulus, times epsilon, which is the uh, strain along the length of the bar. In heat transfer, we have the concept of fins, which is a bar that transfers heat from one end to the air uh, or through, through its surfaces. A heat flux can come into the fin from one end and through convection uh, and, and flows through the bar um, through conduction and leaves the bar or leaves the fin through conduct, uh, convection heat transfer. And the equations are given in here. But we know that as materials go through temperature variations, they expand or shrink. And that the equation for the uh, uh, thermal strain is given by this equation. So thermal strain epsilon theta is equal to alpha, which is the co coefficient of thermal expansion, and delta t, which is the temperature variation or temperature gradient along the surface. What that means is that, for example, in here, the fin, which is a structure, could be made of aluminum or steel or any other material, that is transferring heat. As it's transferring heat and it's going through a temperature gradient along its length, it is expanding or shrinking. That is not really visible to human eye, but it's a physical thing, and it's the simplest explanation of the concept of coupled field. So for this example that I just explained, structural deformation of Sorry about that. Structural deformation of the, um, the fin plus the thermal or heat transfer in the fin leads to a coupled field example. And there are several types of coupled field examples that we could explain. Now, with that, let's go and answer this APDL and learn about coupled field analysis uh, through a very basic example, basically this same fin and ANSYS. So if I close that, the first thing I have to do in ANSYS is to start pre-processing. So I can say prep 7. And now I have to pick the element type. But before I do that, let's see what element types are available in ANSYS APDL. So if I expand this window, which didn't help really, and if I find coupled field category here, I can see that there are element types 222 and 223 for 2D and 226 and 227 for 3D couple field analysis. Now let's go to the help documentation and see the difference between the elements. So here I have shown the help documentation for a solid 226 element type, which can do multiple configurations of coupled field analysis. There's structural thermal, there's piezoresistive, electrostatic structural, on and on. And each one is determined by the key option of the element type. A perfect example to see the effect of key option in a uh, element. So key option or element type 226 is a higher order coupled field analysis. Something to note about the 3D coupled field analysis in ANSYS is that it doesn't have a lower order element type. So both 226 and 227 are higher order. The difference is that 226 by default meshes your elements in hexagonal element shape. And if you go with uh, tetrahedral, it's going to be degenerate element like that. Whereas 227 by default will have a tetrahedral. So this is a 10 node element, whereas 226 is a 20 node element. And to determine which type of physics we want to solve, whether structural thermal or piezoresistive, we have to use the key options. So key option one for this element type determines the coupled field analysis. So if you assign it, assign a value of 11 to that uh, key option, it could be, it would be structural thermal. A value of 101 makes it piezoresistive and 1001 makes it electrostatic structural. And you can find all information here uh, as needed. For our case, we're going to do structural thermal, so we're going to have to use the key option 1 equals 11. 
and the degrees of freedom we're going to have is ux, ui, uz, basically displacements in x, y, and z direction, and temperature. And the forces that we could apply are uh, F and heat, so forces and heat flow or heat flux. And we could use static, full harmonic, or full transient analysis for uh, this uh, problem. So I would do ET for element type, reference number one, and element type 226. And here I definitely have to define a key option to ensure what type of um, analysis or coupled field analysis I want to do. So key opt, short for key option. Element reference is one, key option is also one, and the value is 11. So if I come to this window, see that that is selected and clicking here, analysis type structural thermal is picked, which is the first one. And there is no default key option in here, so we always have to pick the correct key option for the element type. Now I have to define the material properties. First I define the thermal property which is kxx, the, co uh, the conduction coefficient, and I give it a value of 10. So let's just give that value. And then I give the Young's modulus for the material model 1 of let's say uh, 2e11 and now I'm going to give the Poisson ratio for the material model 1 of 0.3 and now to connect the thermal and structural physics I have to define the coefficient of thermal expansion or CTE and the command for that is MP ALPX material model 1 and let's give 1e minus 5. And these values are fictitious. I just came up with these numbers uh, right off the bat just to demonstrate the relationship between structural and thermal physics uh, in a simple example. Let's now create a block 1 meter in length in x direction. And then for y, I go from 0 to 0.1. And for z also, I go from 0 to 0.1. So the block is created like this. So let's define an element size of 0 0.025 for meshing, say type 1 and material 1, and mesh the volume. So this is how the volume is meshed. Now what I want to do is pick the nodes on that surface where x is equal to 0, fix it in all directions, ux, uy, and uz, and also apply a heat flux of 5000 on that surface. So I would say n cell s location x0, and this is the node. Here, I cannot just say d all all zero because these nodes have displacement degrees of freedom as well as temperature. So if I say d all all zero, means not only the displacements are going to be zero, basically not moving in x, y, z direction, but also a temperature of zero will be applied to the, those nodes. One way to do that is to say d all all zero and then d delay temperature, so remove the temperature degree of freedom, or the safer way is to apply the degrees of freedom one by one. So d all ux is zero, d all ui is zero, and d all uz is zero. So right now I'm sure that no temperature boundary condition is applied to that surface. The next thing I want to do is, uh, is to apply a heat flux of 5000 on that surface. So heat flux is a surface load. I use that. And then I say all for all the nodes and H flux for heat flux. And the value is 5,000. So I apply it. And then I say all cell E plot. The next thing I want to do is to apply uh, basically con convection on the other surfaces of the 
uh, block. So if I do a plot right now and plot the number of or plot the area numbers, if I do pnum area one and do replot, see that this area is area number five. So I can unselect that area. So a cell undo area number five. So I'm unselecting that area. Let's do a plot. So as you can see, that area five is unselected. Now I want to select nodes with our, which are attached to all the selected areas. I only have five areas now. So I can say NSLA, short for select nodes attached to areas, S, and comma one, and let's do N plot. So right now I can see that only the nodes on the surface are created or selected. And what I want to do is to apply a convection. So SF, all, convection. And the first one is the convection coefficient, which I'm going to give 20. And the second is the ambient temperature. I'm going to give 32. I'm going to do all cell and E plot. And now this model is ready for solution. So I can say finish, start the solution, and solve. It's going to take a little while because it has uh, multiple degrees of freedom. It actually solved pretty quickly. I can come to finish and go to post one for general post processing. And the first thing I want to see is the displacement. So I can say PL and sol u in the x direction. So the displacement is not that much. It's about 400 microns on the top surface. But as you can see, I did not apply any structural forces to this fin. The only thing I applied was heat flux and convection. And there was conduction along the length of this fin. And through convection, heat was transferring outside the, to, to the outside amb ambient temperature. So if I do PLN sol, plot nodal solution, and now I want to see the temperature, I can see the temperature gradient along the length of the fin. So here is about 90 degrees and here is about 32. And let's check the vector plot of, let's say if I can find temperature, flux and gradients, thermal flux or thermal gradient. It's actually going that way because um, uh, there's max more temperature or temperature is higher on the space and I can pick uh, th thermal flux now it's going outwards if I take a look at it from the side I can see that it, the um, that heat is transferring to the outside air and I can also see the trusses I mean the stresses so if I do PLE sol plot element solution and say S for stress and X along the length of the fin. These are going to be the longitudinal stresses. Let's try to move this down. And I can also see um, the strains. So let's go into this window so I can show better the different types of strains that we have. So there is elastic strains and there is thermal strains. So let's see the thermal strain along the X direction first. And that's because we had thermal load applied to this model. So this is the um, thermal strain. And what we could do if we had a uh, simpler model, we could um, see the strain and divide it by the uh, temperature gradient and see if it, it matched with the thermal coefficient or coefficient of thermal expansion that we gave to the model. But let's see the elastic strain in the x direction. So as we see, it's basically uh, negative and uh, that's because the stresses that we have are basically thermal. I mean, the, the strains are thermal. So that's why we get a uh, better visualization of the thermal strains compared to the elastic strains. 
And finally, let's see the reaction forces. So I can say PR R4. See if there is any reaction force. If I scroll down, see that there is no real structural forces applied because there is no uh, structural forces or uh, external stru structural forces applied to this bar, to this fan. All we have is thermal forces or thermal loads. And we can also take a look at these strains or stresses. PLE Sol. I've actually looked at the stress, but let's see the uh, the von Mises stress, for example. So in this very simple example, we covered coupled field analysis in ANSYS APDL for a fin that goes through a um, temperature or heat transfer through conduction and convection, and we saw its uh, structural deformation because of the uh, heat transfer or temperature gradient.